Hello comrades and welcome to the Soviet vlog. Uh, I decided I'm gonna make a separate playlist and this is where I'm gonna answer your questions that maybe not related to the life in the Soviet Union because quite often you ask really good questions that I would like to make a answer, make a video about it, but it's not related to life in the Soviet Union so I would just uh, type the answer but it's like man Probably it's a good topic to discuss, so this is why we're gonna uh, start answering your questions in my new playlist called Soviet Vlog, and I hope you're gonna enjoy it, and I'll be waiting for your questions, and I'll be answering them. So today I got a question, it sounds like this. Hi, my parents came to the USA escaping communism during 1956 Hungarian Revolution. So this uh, uh, person is originally from Hungary. You grew up under communism, but you were towards the end of it. I would like to ask how you feel seeing the USA turning socialist communist, the totalitarian strong arm being used by the radical left. We both know the measures needed to be taken to institute that Marxist ideology and I would, uh, would really like to get your feelings and thoughts watching America fall. Thank you. Smiley face. Okay, so what do I think about USA turning socialist communist? Well, first of all, I want to say I get really upset when people use improper terminology. And it happens quite often here in the mass media and on the Facebook and other social medias that people use in words without really maybe not understanding or really like overblowing the terminology uh, so you cannot say that I grew up under communism and your parents didn't escape communism from Hungary because there were never ever communism anywhere we lived in Soviet Union under socialism and to say that USA turning socialist is absolutely not correct. Like communism is the level of society. So after you go all the way through the socialism, then you enter the communism phase. And that's when the productive forces develop so much that there is no need for money. Like a way of exchange of goods and services. Like we got so much plenty of everything that you know people just work and then you go to the store you need a jacket you pick up a jacket and you go and continue making bicycles or whatever it's like general uh, theory of communism so there was no communism anywhere even in the soviet union now united states like radical left doesn't is not trying to turn united states into socialist country socialism this is very important. It's when all the means of production are not in private hands. Like nothing. No farms, no factories. This is when the socials, when the government takes over everything. So when radical left exploring the ideas of free health care for the whole country, it's not socialism. When they say would like free college for everyone, it's not socialism either. And uh, if you look around, United States is the only developed country in the world that doesn't have a socialized medicine. Every other country, Australia, Britain, France, Norway, they all have some kind of form of government controlled uh, health system. It's just Japan as well. And just recently I read an article and it was in Wall Street Journal, so it's not leftist paper. And they kind of dropped it like almost, you know, between the lines almost saying, you know, the Japan has a crisis with the, a lot of elderly people. Like it's the, one of the countries has the most of the old population. And because of that, their medical expense is growing. And it says right now, Japan is spending 13% of their uh, GP, uh, GDP, right? Gross domestic product on health care while it's being so ran by the government. And it says, while the United States spent 17%. So here we got this weird situation when government-managed healthcare system spends less GDP in percentage-wise 
on a way older population, the United States, which is private, supposedly more effective healthcare system, spends United States on a younger population. So sometimes things don't work as the theory works that capitalism is always way more effective than socialistic kind of uh, system. So I just would like that people use proper terminology and you know you cannot say that right now United States is turning. We have uh, here in America social security system from way back when, like from the 30s and to think about it what is the social security? It's the government ran program. It's pretty much government admitted like, okay, people, you are dumb. You don't know how to save money for your retirement. So we're going to take care of you by taking money from you and giving them later when you get old. If you like cut all the BS and look. And I think everyone likes social security system. I mean, I'm personally not a big fan that People, you know, they take my money they earn, turn around and give somebody else. Uh, but that's what they decided most effective way to make sure that people have some means to live and not starve to death when you turn old. Because unfortunately, a lot of people don't know how to save and how to prepare yourself uh, for the old age. So there is we go. It's already from the 30s, uh, United States started taking these social programs, but it doesn't make America socialist if it had social programs. And you may be surprised and would say something like, I can't believe Sergei Protak, you know, left and socialist social programs uh, because he grew up in the Soviet Union and he should know better. Well, I do know better, that's true. And I'm actually quite a confused person. I'm not left, I'm not right. I'm a libertarian with quite a few like a socialist leanings. So, for example, if we have a choice here in America to spend a trillion dollars on Department of Defense or on a free education for American people, well, hell yeah, let's spend money on people here in the country so they have better education and better um, uh, work perspective versus dumping millions and billions of dollars in Afghanistan for 18 years uh, building roads in s some mountains and you know letting our soldiers die there for forever like Afghanistan was the longest war in the history of the United States and you know every empire that went in Afga Afghanistan so British failed Soviets spent 10 years in 80s and so in Afghanistan failed and now United States struggles there for 18 years thousands of lives, billions of dollars, and still no end in sight, no idea what it's going to be called victory. So for me, in this perspective, I'm, I guess, mostly like anti-war person. So if we have a choice spending money on military, occupying other countries, changing regimes, I would rather uh, provide Americans with three uh, free health care and free college although personally I don't think giving everyone free college is proper way it should be at least you have some kind of test so you show that hey I'm smart enough to go to college like they had in Soviet Union well, I think I believe in Germany that's what they have it's a free college in Germany but you need to pass the entry test to get to get in there so this is my thoughts about your question as I said uh, Please use correct terminology. Don't throw around this word socialist and communist because this is not what's going on in the United States and you cannot call turning socialist in this country. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have questions, please post under this video and we'll make more videos in the Soviet vlog. До свидания. Goodbye. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so